Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, we're going to learn about the PDF function at the Power Apps Canvas. It's a function that you can create your own PDF file from a gallery or even a screen. And after that, you can create this file on your OneDrive, SharePoint, or if you want it, you can send a test on an email. PDF function, it's a function that it is called for now experimental so it, it's not even at preview it will be a preview feature and after the preview state will go to the new so it's always like that the microsoft launched something we try it like experimental feature and after that if it's a good feature go to preview when we test a little bit more and after that goes to the production okay so Always remember to get caution when you are dealing with experiment or preview features because it's not at production, it's not 100% ready yet. You can learn more about it clicking here, so I will resume that for you. PDF function receives a screen or a container or a gallery, the size that you want and other properties. The only one that is required is the object that you want to create a PDF. It's like taking a print screen from it. Always, always, and always read about the no limitations, okay? Because the limitation is something that you need to understand before using the, the feature. Here, we know that we cannot support the PCF control. So we cannot take a print screen from PCF control, like the... Uh, charts, Power BI tile, and map, for example, or any other PCF that you, you have it. Nested galleries aren't supported also, okay? So if you have a gallery inside a gallery, that's going to be an issue for you. Some Latin script types are not showing in the PDF, and also here's it, creation of fileable PDF isn't support. So basically the PDF, it's like a print screen, right? It's like an image, not a um, PDF file, uh, where you can insert data with fields and, and everything else, right? So it's like a print, like an image. So let's do a test here. Uh, I'm going to insert a button right here on my screen so we can click and call the PDF. Exactly like we saw here at the docs, it's pretty simple. It's just PDF and the control name. Like I said, supports uh, uh, some controls like gallery, container and screen okay so in my case here i will did do the first task i will print screen all the screen so i'm in this button i'm going to insert pdf and the target that i want to create the pdf the the image that i want to create is from this screen right here this is the name of the screen i'm going to insert here and close the pdf function what we need to do after calling this function is to set the result in a variable. So the PDF will be saved at my PDF file and the content of this variable will be a file. Pretty cool, right? I'm not using parameters. I'm, I'm trying to be pre pretty clean and simple in the first call so you can understand it. I'm going to click this button. I'm going to call create the PDF. When we click here, take a look, take some seconds to generate the file. After that, I can see the PDF. Let's create a blank screen here, new screen blank. I'm going to insert here. At this new blank screen, I'm going to insert the PDF object, the PDF viewer. That is also an experimental object, right? So I'm going to insert here. And instead of using the document sample, I will insert our PDF file that we just created. Take a look at this. It's so cool, right? We just printed the screen and created a PDF file. Like I said, we can change the orientation, the size of the PDF. So, so here, it's the default values of the properties. The size, it's A4. The DPI, it's 96. Uh, the margin also, the full here, you can see the orientation. Uh, also, the default, it's vertical, portrait, right? So let's change that to horizontal because our screen here, it's horizontal, right? Uh, so let's change from portrait to landscape. The first task here, I'm going to go to this button and change 
the parameter. I'm going to insert here the orientation here uh, as the value. We can see an example, it's a string. Okay, so landscape, I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Now, when I create the PDF again, I can go to the our, our, our screen that is with the PDF and here is it. The page changed, right? The orientation of the page changed. Also, we can change the margin. I can insert like a, a different margin here and also the DPI. So let's change it so we can test it also. I'm going to change it now. We're going to insert this example here the mar with more margin and also with uh, DPI. So just to check what's going to change here. So I created the PDF again, go to the new screen and here's it. A little bit more of margin. Uh, you can change the size and everything else. I know that you already understood that. So let's move to the next topic. Before that, just let's change here to A3 so we can see the difference be between A4 and A3 at the size and here's it it's the size of the page so the a3 with the portrait a little bit more of margin the pdf got better the dpi i can change because you can see that the resolution is not that good but uh, you can change the dpi and the image will be better okay the next topic that i want to talk to you about it's about expander containers how can i have a gallery that is uh that needs to be expanded right because a gallery have more rows. Let's say that you have a gallery with more rows. In my case, this screen do not have a lot of rows. So I'm going to create my own gallery here. Uh, let me create a blank screen with a huge gallery, like a blank vertical gallery. And I'm going to insert here a sequence of uh, 50, rows and i'm going to insert image here on an icon so we can have something here okie dokie and take a look here i have 50 rows and i'm just seeing seeing right one two three four five six of them where is the others and if and if i want all the others on my pdf there is the issue that you're going to get so here is where let me let me Insert like a rectangle here so I can see the rows. Okay, nice. And what I'm, I'm trying to say here, it's how can I generate PDF with all the rows? What I'm going to do now is to insert a button again to generate a PDF. So set PDF file again. But now I'm going to call PDF from the gallery. I don't want to print screen all the the screen, I just want a specifically control, a specifically object, the gallery one. So I'm going to insert, take a PDF file, a print from the gallery where the expand, take a look, the option is not uh, here as out complete. So I will copy from here, expand containers. I'm going to copy that, paste here and set to true. The default is false. And now I'm taking a PDF or print from the gallery one with the expand containers through. After that, what I can do here is to insert a PDF viewer right aside on the right side of my gallery, pointing to my PDF file. And when I click this button right here, take a look, take a look. Here is it, all my gallery on a PDF. You need to understand something pretty important here, okay? Do not close the video. Let me say something about the gallery. When you use a function like sequence, all the 50 rows will be here at the gallery. When you try to see a table, so when you try to, listen to me, when you try to see a table like SharePoint list table, you will not see all the rows on the gallery, right? Because when you connect a data source, you call some rows with, with the, the gallery. So within the gallery, you will have some of the rows, not all of them. And while you, you scroll the gallery, 
you start to fetch it again from the data source. Let me be more clear here. I just connected the TB address here, a list with 4,000 items, more than 4,000 items. So when I see the gallery, I do not see all the rows, right? The gallery do not get all the rows from TB address. While you start to scroll the gallery, the gallery keeps fetching the, those rows. So when you try to take a PDF from a, a large list directly from the data source, you're going to have issues. That's why you should collect them in a collection and set at the gallery. And if this collection is so large, like thousands and thousands of rows, you will not be able to create a PDF like that easily. That's why in some cases you will need to, I don't know, row all the gallery. So take a look at the size, row at the gallery to the end and the gallery will keep fetching the rows. And after that, you can generate a PDF like that and you ha will have the PDF file right here. It's taking some seconds because of the, the size of it, right? So I will wait here some seconds and let's see. Here is it, a PDF file with a lot and a lot and a lot of rows. Not all the rows, but all the rows loaded to the gallery. So let's end this video showing pretty quickly how to send this file attached to the email, okay? Going directly to the point, connecting here the Outlook and using the Outlook connector, we're going to insert a button or on an event, whatever you want. Simple as that, I just inserted at this button the send email to this email with this subject and uh, that body. The optional parameter will be the attachment where we're going to send the PDF. The attachment is on plural, so that means that can be one or more, a table, right? So my table just have one record, a simple record where this record going to be my PDF file. First property of this file is going to be the name, so PDF file example dot pdf content content bytes that will be the pdf file the last one uh, i do not remember if this is required but we have all data type okay i'm inserting here to test it but i do not remember if it is required or not but i will insert here the all data type so Basically as that, if I click this button, let's let's test it and see if it is working. Uh, this is the button of send PDF email. And I'm going to click it here. Here is it, PDF file. When I click it, I can see. Where is my PDF? Okay, here is it. All the rows in my PDF file. Pretty cool, right? So it's simple as that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you watched this video completed, please leave your feedback down below with the word strawberry. Write strawberry so you know that you watched this video completed to the end. Check the links below where you can connect with me at the LinkedIn. Also, we have a coupon code in the best school where you can learn more about Power Platform. So check it out, a special offer using our coupon code. And if you need any support or help to develop Power Platform solutions and Microsoft solutions, we have a company here ready to help you. You can contact us on the email on the description. Share this channel so we can grow up and bring more free content with quality like that to you. Thank you so much for watching. We see you in another video, in another class and consider to subscribe.